Yes, hackers are going to be able to pull every single credit card information from the website with this hacking technique. And it is critical to authorize and check and verify who are the one executing those application programming interfaces calls before you run them. It's critical to have a mapping of who's allowed to do what inside your application systems. Once again, hacking is illegal. If you want to do any of these hacking activities, only do it on your own application service or only do it if you have the consent from the company or the website owners. So right in front of us, we have a website and we're using Kali Linux as our hacker's operating system. So right here, what we can see as follow. This screen is the API for web service. Check the, the blue SDL file for this web service and try to get some customer credit numbers. So you can see as follow, enter your account number. So in this case, 101 is already filled up for us and select the fuse to return. So you can go ahead and say first name, click submit. All right, it does a call and you get back the first name, which is in this case, Joe. If I select last name and I click submit, once again, over here, Snow. So Joe Snow is the user. We can click under login count, click submit again, and we can see the following, right? Zero login count, whatever case is. And you can see right at the bottom, we have the following. View the web services definition language to see the complete API. So go ahead and click on it. So once you clicked on it, you can see as follow. Under the URI part, the URL part, you can see web code services, WSDL scanning, Question mark, WSDL. All right, so here you can see all the message like get credit card request, get credit card response, get first name. So all these calls are being made when you selected those buttons earlier to pull out those details. And of course, behind that particular API could be a database or running on whatever database system that you can think of, okay? So in this case, whenever you do a call, it pulls information from the database back into the interface, right? So that when you as a user, you're able to see all these details. And this is used very, very commonly across application system, websites, mobile applications. So what we can do next is to use a tool to help us do the enumeration of this type of services. So you can use a tool like SOAP UI. So I can just SOAP UI-5.6.0, hit enter on that. And this will begin starting up SOAP UI. And then we have the Endpoint Explorer. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and close on this. And you can see on the top left side, there is SOAP, all right? So go ahead and click on it. So once you clicked on it, what you need to do now is to go back to the site, copy this particular link right here, which brings us to the WSDL, go back to SOAP UI, all right? Paste under the initial WSDL and go ahead and click OK. And now it asks us for authentication, right? Authentication required for this particular IP address or domain name or a website IP address that is accessible from the internet. So go ahead and enter, for this case, guess, guess. All right, so this is the username and the password that's needed in order to access WebGoat's APIs or WSDL. Click OK on that. And you can see on the left side, we have populated. And here you can see the following, get credit card detail. All right, so the goal of this exercise is to find out credit card information of this particular user, right? Because if you go back to the site earlier, you can see as follow, right? We only have three fields to return. But what if I want to see more information on the website? And what if I want to see other users' information? Because let's go back into SOAP UI now and go ahead and double click on request one, all right? So what we need to do now is to ensure that we're routed to the right request. So go ahead and enter the correct IP address. So in this case, if you go and check it out, over here, it's just 192.168.0.119. Go back to sub UI, 192.168.0.119. Okay, so there we go. And what you want to do now, you can see right here, there is a XID INT. All right, so there's a question mark. So we need to fill this up, say we want a one. And right at the bottom, there's this following, right? So no authorization, select add new authorization, select basic, click OK, enter the username, as well as the password that we entered earlier in order to be able to access DWSDL. So let's go ahead and click the submission of the request to the specified endpoint URL. Click send on that. And here we are. We're able to get the credit card details. So in this case, 987654321. What if we want to bring this to the next level? We want to see someone else's credit card details. Can we do that? So going right back into the tutorial, what we can do now is to change up the particular data here. So in this case, instead of 101, I can change it to say 102 and I can go ahead and click in three, two, one, submit requests. Oh my goodness. We're seeing someone else's credit card details right here using this hacking technique. And this is allowed to happen because at the authorization level, 
the website is not checking who is running those calls. So it's critical if you're building application systems to always check are you authenticated to use it? Not just that, but you want to check whether they're authorized to run certain services, certain actions against your services. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. Like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can become abreast of the latest ethical hacking tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.